I've got a new budget wild camping setup for just £150 and I've bought it out today to see if it's any good. I did put a setup like this together just over a year ago, but a lot's changed since then. Prices have gone up, demand's gone up, a lot of things are really hard to find in stock at the minute as well. So consider this a refresh for 2022. I haven't even checked it all over yet. I've just thrown it into the bag and brought it out. So let's hope it's all all right. So before I get it all unpacked and pitch up, I thought I'd let you have a look at the rucksack. So I've gone for a Euro Hike Nepal 65 rucksack. So it's obviously a decent size at 65 litres. It cost me 25 quid this from Go Outdoors. It's got a few nifty little features on it that you might not expect from a, a bag at this sort of price. So if we look around the outside, we've got an access bit at the bottom where you can put your sleeping bag. Now this does have a separator inside that's unzippable. I've had to unzip it because the tent that I've chosen is quite a big pack size so I needed the whole length of the rucksack to fit that in but you do have the option of keeping that compartment separate for your sleeping bag. We've got straps here as well that go all the way around the bottom so you can strap a roll mat underneath. You could strap something through here as well if you wanted to and cinch that down and then you've got loops here or walking poles or anything else that you want to strap on the outside. What's a little bit different with this is you haven't got the big stretchy pockets that you normally get at the bottom there. They're higher up, but they are a decent size. So in this side, I've managed to fit my smart water bottle and two cans of pop. And then I've just slid a two litre bottle into that side. And obviously you can't um, zip that up because it's not tall enough. Then on the top, you've got this bungee cord. You could just use that to throw your coat or anything loose like that under. If I turn it around, You've got a quite a decent sized pocket in the lid, a hook to put your car keys on, and we've got an adjustable back on this one. So it slides up and down on these rails. So there's a rail on each side, it slides up and down. And then you use these buckles to adjust how far upwards you want it to go. So I'm pretty much at the top there, but there's plenty of room to adjust it. Hip belt, it's not massively thick but it's okay. There aren't any pockets on the hip belt. You've got an adjustable waist strap, a sternum strap with a elasticated carrying loop on there. There's loops on both sides here and then low bearing straps there. So at 25 quid, I don't think that's bad for a decent sized rucksack like that. It does feel quite well made. It's quite heavy at 1.4 kilos, but it does fit quite comfortably. And I think comfort is more important than weight when you're looking at rucksacks. You can carry a lot more weight more easily in a rucksack that's really comfortable and fitted to properly. I'm pretty sure I had the same rucksack in the 150 pound setup last year as well, but it was branded as Freedom Trail or something like that. Right, let me get everything out of my bag and then I'll let you have a look. So just before I get set up, to be fully transparent with you, I've unloaded everything out of my bag and just spread it out so you can see what I've bought, what's part of the kit and the little bits and pieces that I grabbed from home as well. So this is the kit. We've got Eurohike Tamar 2 dome tent. You'll see all this in more detail once it's set up. I've got a Lithing, Lithing, however you pronounce it, sleep mat, a Viking Trek sleeping bag. And then in here, I've got a plastic toilet trowel. That was part of the setup, but also in there, I've got some sanitizer, a carry bag for rubbish, some toilet tissue, a cloth, toothbrush, toothpaste. I bought those from home. So everything except for the plastic trowel in there I bought from home. The trowel was included in the, the price for the kit. And then I've got a cook set. So there's a couple of pans in there. There's a stove and a couple of other bits. Can't remember exactly, but we'll have a look later. I've thrown a cloth and a rubbish bag in there as well. And then from home, I've bought stuff that you could just grab out of your kitchen. So my water is in an old pot bottle and a smart water bottle, got two cans of Pepsi, 
And then I've got a few of these at home, but you probably have a first aid kit yourself lying around, or at least some plasters that you can grab. That was from the pound shop, so I bought that. There's my filming stuff, so my GoPro batteries and everything are in there, and then a light. I bought this plastic mug, but I'm sure everyone's got a beaker of some sort or something they could bring at home. And then in this bag is my tea stuff. So I've got some tea bags that I stole from a hotel on a recent work trip some sugar and sweetener from Starbucks and some milk from McDonald's. Then for my clothes, I've just used a carrier bag because I didn't want to spend money on dry bags. So this is a ultra light tempede dry bag. I've got a fleece, a hat, a set of base layer trousers and my decathlon down jacket in there. And then this is my food. So again, just if you could grab it in any shop really, one of the pasta pot things, a couple of cobs, some wine gums, and some chocolate. So that's everything that I bought with me. There are a few things that I would usually take on a camp that I haven't bought with me as well, like a head torch. Most people will have a torch of some description at home or you can grab them from the pound shop. If you're just getting started, just take one of those. Tonight, I'm just gonna use the light on my phone if I need to. I would usually bring an inflatable or soft pillow as well, but that sleep mat's got a raised bit built into it. So if I need to, I'll make a pillow out of my coat or some clothing. We'll see how we get on. And my table as well. So novice wild camper table, I do like to take that. But as I said, for this one, I just want to stick to minimal kit and the cheapest budget I can. So I'm sure I'll survive without it for this one. So this Euro Hike Tamar 2 tent was 39 quid. It weighs 2.73 kilos. It's a two man tent. It's quite a big pack size, 61 centimeters by 15 by 15. Comes in this carry bag. It says quick pitch time in eight minutes, space for a standard double air bed. So it's 210 by 150 centimetres inside and 100 centimetres high. It's made from polyester with a hydrostatic head of 2,000 millimetres. So I wouldn't take it out in any sort of heavy rain or strong wind because it has got fiberglass poles as well, 7.9 mil fiberglass poles. But for getting started with wild camping in fair weather like we've got now, it should be okay. So we've got instructions on the inside. Looks like there's two poles, so. We'll just go for it. So the pegs are just the wire ones that you get with most budget tents. So they're something that you might want to swap out if you kept the tent for a while. What they'll do as a test for tonight. So a quick sit rep, I've just got the two poles in. You can see the cross in the middle. It is an outer pitch first. So I'll put that up the inners there, I'll put that in in a minute. We've got a flappy bit that's on a loop there. And then there's hooks on each corner that go onto these loops. Seems a decent size. You've got these super stealth guy lines. I might take those off for tonight's camp. There's no wind forecast. We've got a vent here, but we'll have a look inside once I've got the inner on and I'll get it pegged out and get the door pegged out as well. So I'm just going to get this inner put inside, but I suppose if you wanted to, you could just use this outer as a shelter if you're bivy camping or something like that. So there's these plastic hooks on each corner that go onto a D ring on the corner of the tent. And then there's these toggles around the inner that go into loops on the outer. I'll tell you what, once this is connected, it can stay connected. All the other tents I've had that are this sort of style have the inner attached when it comes, you know, the Van Gogh ones and things like that. Maybe that's part of the reason this is a little bit cheaper because that's a a step that they can miss out in the manufacturing process. But yeah, once this is connected, I'll leave it connected and just, when I'm packing up, throw it back in the bag and leave it like that. And there she is, all pegged out, apart from the guy lines, because like I say, it's forecast maximum of eight mile an hour winds tonight. So I think we'll be fine. So we've got a peg on each of the four corners. There's a peg halfway down the side one on the back. There is four for the doors, but I've just put two on for now. One holds this side panel out, and then there's one to hook the door onto. 
Same on that side. Let's get in and have a look. So one thing to point out straight away is that we've got a door design like you have on the Alpkit Soloist. So similar to that, once the door's rolled back and roll back properly, you've got a massive gap here between the roof and the floor. And that's a lot bigger than it was on the Alpkit Soloist. You do have the option with this to stake the door out like that if you've got walking poles or trekking poles or you can fashion yourself a couple of sticks. But yeah, I think in any sort of rain, this is a flawed design. You could get away with it, but it'd just be a faff to keep managing it and drying up the inside and everything. So because I'm a scientist, to give you a rough idea of how big that gap is, that's a two litre bottle and a smart water bottle. And I would say the lid of the smart water bottle is pretty much in line with that. So you've got a good probably I don't know, foot and a half there. So we've got two zips on the door. We've got a mesh panel at the top. There's a pocket there, which you can use to shove that door into. My inner's just popped off already. We've got a pocket, two pockets there, two pockets there. I could put the door into that smaller one, actually. Leave a new pocket. Then we've got solid walls up to probably two thirds and then mesh at the top. And then we've got a vent at the back. The floor feels really thick, but it's really noisy as well. So it's like a ripstop fabric. I think the whole thing's made of polyester. Right, let's have a look at the sleep mat. I've got a repair kit with it. So this is the mat, it's a living one or lit thing. It has got, but it claims to have a foot pump at the bottom, but I would have been there all day with that. So I just inflated it there. It's got this raised pillow bit at one end. It's a decent size as well. It's 197 centimeters long and 65 wide. And it's got these little press studs down the side. So if you've got any friends, you can stick two of them together to make a double mat. And I got that on offer on Amazon. It was 17 pound 59. So that's going to be interesting. I've put the sleep mat in the tent and the pillow end basically fills the tent. So I've got the foot end all the way up against the tent there. And I'm pretty much at the top there. So I might turn it around and sleep with my head down that end because that's going to get annoying. One thing I forgot to mention on this rucksack as well, not that I need to mention it, but it's got two closures on it. So if you haven't got much stuff, you can shove that inside and close it there. Or if you want to extend it, you've got another probably 15 centimeters there of space, and then you can tie it up there. It's got a nifty little feature. So I have turned the sleep mat around the other way and put the pillow end at that end. I'm going to try and pull the pegged corners out a little bit as well to give me a little bit more space at that end hopefully. Sleeping bag, this was $34.99 and it's a Viking Trek one. It's forecast to get to 8 degrees tonight so it should be plenty warm enough. I've put my bags in the corner there, I've got my filming stuff, my clothes, toilet kit and then I'll just shove my rucksack in the side here. There's not a massive vestibule on this tent but it's big enough just to store a few things. So this is my stove set. That was £19.79, and I'll open that up soon because I'm starving. Food's down there. Space for my drinks and water and stuff down there. And yeah, that's it. I have taken the guy lines off for now just because they were fluorescent yellow and I don't need them tonight. So just while I remember, the other thing I bought for this setup was the gas can for the stove. That cost me £6. And the toilet trowel that I showed you earlier was £4.85. So in total for this whole setup, I spent £147.22. Now you can camp for a lot cheaper than that if you use a bivy or a tarp or a survival shelter or something like that. But I think if you're just thinking about getting into wild camping, it's important that your first camps are really enjoyable. Otherwise, you'll just end up sacking it off and swapping your camping gear for some golf clubs or a squash racket or something like that. And you wouldn't wish that on anybody, would you? So I wanted to go for a setup with a proper tent, 
an air mat and a sleeping bag to try and find a setup that lets you give wild camping a go without costing you a fortune. Then if you want to, you can swap out an upgrade kit as you get more into it. You can sell or donate your old stuff for somebody else to give it a go, or just keep hoarding it like most of us do. So this is the Odo land, I'm sure it's called, cook set. You've probably seen these before. It's two pans, a little one and a big one, and everything packs inside. You've got a stove, comes with a little folding spork as well, which I remembered to bring this time. I wrapped it inside one of the co-op carrier bags just to stop it clanging around. And that's the gas can that I bought. It doesn't come with that. You have to buy one of those. It did come with this little green cloth and then the handles on the pans fold around and stick together like that. The silicon coated so you don't burn yourself and then on the inside there are markings to show you how much water you've got in there. So that's the stove. You just open the valve out and then the feet spin around and then you flick over these little pan stand bits. It has got an igniter on it as well and then it just screws onto the gas canister. I thought it came with a little plastic stand as well to put your gas canister onto, but I must have left that at home. Shouldn't need one anyway with a gas can this big. Right, so we've got a pot pasta bolognese. Don't tell you how much water it needs, but it just says fill up to the fill line, so we'll have a guess. Got a couple of cheese topped cobs. Probably just eat one of those and dip into it. You can use this second pan as a lid put on there as well. So I'll do that and hopefully it'll boil a bit quicker. And I've got no idea how long that took because I started daydreaming. So we're up to the fill line and then it says to leave it for five minutes. So just while my food's doing its thing, I hit 6,000 subscribers on a channel this week, which as I said before, just blows my brain. But I just wanted to take a moment, say a massive thank you to everybody who's supported the channel and everybody who watches the videos and drops comments and all that kind of stuff. Just as always, a massive thank you. I've realized as well that this will be the hundredth video that I upload to the channel, which again, just blows my mind. There's a hundred of these things out there. If you fancy a laugh, go and check out some of the earlier videos on the channel. Can't beat a cheese topped cob, can you? And it is a cob when you're in Derbyshire. I don't need to show you this really, it's nothing special. Just pass the bolognese, but I'll have a bit of a dunk and get it down me. That's me fed and watered. I'm just gonna head up to the top end and catch the last bit of this sunset. It's gonna be dark in about half an hour. So I'll go and watch that and I'll catch you in the morning and let you know how I get on with this gear tonight. morning folks so I've been up for about half an hour now it's just getting on for six o'clock just waiting for the sun to come up I've packed up quite a few of the bits inside the tent I'm sat on my sleeping bag in its 
compression bag. It's got the tent to put away, but I'm just having a, a cup of tea and breakfast bar of champions. So I think I had probably the best night's sleep I've had on a wild camp. If not the best, it was definitely the second best. Really surprised with that sleeping bag and the air mat as well. It only got down to seven degrees last night, so it's quite a mild night anyway, but I didn't feel the cold. I did get changed. I just swapped my coat for my Decathlon down jacket. I kept my normal thin panther trousers on and took my shoes and socks off. I didn't need a pillow because the, the raised bit in that air mattress was good enough for me. But depending on how you sleep, you might need a pillow to go with it. The tent was fine, really spacious inside. The only thing was that I could do it another 10 centimeters of length with this air mat in there. So it says it's 210 centimeters long on the bag. The mat's 197 centimeters, but the mat fills the depth of the tent. But the width's fine. There's plenty of room for two people in there if you wanted to share one. I did move the mat during the night and put it diagonally across the tent as well. And although this door design's a bit flawed if it's raining, if it's not, it's quite handy because you can stand in this bit here and put your shoes on while you're stood up rather than just sticking your feet out of the tent, putting your shoes on and then doing some sort of reverse downward dog to try and get out of the tent without knocking it over, which is my usual approach. So I think if I was just starting out wild camping, this tent would definitely see you through your first sort of spring and summer of camping. You might want to think about upgrading it when it gets to the wetter months. Likewise, a sleep mat, that would see you through a spring and summer, but as soon as it started to get cold, you'd need something with a bit of insulation, or you'd have to get a foil mat or closed cell foam mat, I think they're called, to put underneath it, just to shield you from the ground. And the sleeping bag, I mean, obviously I've only used it once. It was fine down to seven, eight degrees. I don't know how it would be any colder than that, but I didn't have any base layers or anything on, so that'd be my next step, would be to get some decent base layers, merino ones ideally. But then if you wanted to get into sort of sub-zero winter camping, you'd obviously need to upgrade that as well. And that rucksack's comfortable enough, I think. I'll probably try it a couple more times on some longer distances, but it's okay. You'd probably just use that until it started to fall to pieces or failed you somehow. The next thing I'd buy that I did miss a little bit would be a sit mat or a chair or something like that, just so that you're able to sit anywhere without getting a cold arse. So there we have it. If you're on a tight budget, or you just want to give wild camping a go without spending a small fortune, you definitely can, and you probably should.